finding our fathers. Isaiah 63 verse 16. But you are our father. Though Abraham does not know us or Israel acknowledge us. You Lord are our father. Our redeemer from of old is your name. There is a father that does not change. Even when you're in trouble and you're confused and you do not know the next step, there is a father that you can go, go to. Isaiah chapter 63 from verse 16. In the day of rebellion of Israel, when the children of Israel were confused, they were able to trace or navigate their way back to the father. And that's what I want us to do today. All of us says you are our father though Abraham does not know us or Israel acknowledge us you Lord are our father our redeemer from of old is your name lift those hands to God and say father you're my father the redeemer from of old is your name so talk to him as your dad as your best friend you have access miracles will happen here today Things would happen here this morning because the father of fathers is here. This uh, message I will divide into two segments. One, I'm going to tell you what I call the responsibilities of fathers. They can be up to 50, but you know, for summary purpose, you have to just, so I'm going to share five. Then I'm going to tell you a Bible story and then we're going to pray for the men. Our men today will stand taller in the name of Jesus. So women, please, I would dedicate all this to men. When I say a man is a priest, it doesn't mean that a woman is not a priest. But today, I'm talking to what? Men. So women, chill, okay? The five responsibilities of a father. Because for me, you know, for, to make it easy, I like to use acronyms and all that. So I'm going to use the P's, the five P's of a father. A father as a prince, a father as a priest, a father as a prophet, a father as a provider, and a father as a protector. So I say a responsibility to lead, that makes him a prince. A responsibility to seek God, that makes him a priest. A responsibility to pray, that makes him a prophet. A responsibility to provide for others, that makes him a provider. A responsibility to protect others, that makes him what? A protector. A protector. So fathers have these responsibilities to lead, to seek God's will, to pray and worship, to protect the beautiful, the innocent, the good, and to provide for those people that they love. In Genesis chapter 18 verse 19, the Bible says, God said, for I have chosen him. It was referring to Abraham. I'm a bit fast because the message is a bit long. Um, you can repeat that slide. I think some people are writing. The five P's. Genesis 18, 19. I will read that for you. Yes. The five P's. Prince, priest, prophet, provider, and protector. Those are the things I've coined for the man. And let me tell you, man, even if you think you do not have the capacity to work in it, if that is your responsibility, the Lord will give you the enablement. He will give you the power. He will give you the chuspa. He will give you all that you need to be able to work in this. In the name of Jesus. Genesis 18, 19. God said, I have chosen him so that he may direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord. God chose you as a father to direct your children and your household after you. To do what? To keep the way of the Lord. Now, look at it very closely. Okay, now they can show that scripture. How would you do that? He said, by doing what is right and just. Genesis 18, 19. God said, I have chosen Abraham. We can show the scripture now. So that he would direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord. He's not going to direct his children and show them the way of the Lord by telling them is going to do that by doing what? By doing what is right. The model of fathers that we have are those fathers that when they're coming back from work, immediately they horn, everybody will disappear. 
because you know you don't want him to see you you have not done something right but this is not the model that God is saying and this is not the reason he chose Abraham said I chose him because he will do are you in that scripture yes for I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing somebody said by doing the reason we have problem is because we are not doers we are sayers and talk is cheap by doing what is right and just so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. When you do what God has told you to do, God is committed to watching over his word to perform it in your life. I'm going to share the same scripture in the message translation. It says, yes, I've settled on him as the one to train his children and future family to observe God's way of life. Live kindly and generously and fairly. The man, the father is supposed to do what? Live kindly, live generously, live fairly. So it's not about saying, it's about being. It's about what you're doing. I want us to look at another scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 6. We, look, we read from verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. says, these commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts impress them on your children talk about them when you sit at home I'm reading Deuteronomy chapter 6 from verse 6 talk about them when you sit at home when you walk along the road when you lie down and when you get up tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads write them on the door frames of your house and on your gates that means as a father, you should have a bandana that represents your value. You should have a wristband. You should have a ring. You should have, you know, your, your sneakers. Everything should speak Jesus. And when you're chit-chatting at home, everything should be your values. Even when you're cracking jokes, your jokes should bring out the values of Christ. And now jump to verse 20 of the same Deuteronomy 6. Said, In the future, when your sons ask you, what is the meaning of the stipulations, decrees, and laws the Lord your God has commanded you? That means you have an assignment. Because it said in Genesis 18, I have chosen you for this assignment. You have a responsibility to lead. So as a leader, where are you leading your family to? That's what God is saying. It's not just a man to have uh, the biggest piece of meat in the pot. No, that's not your assignment. Is to lead them to discover what is God's will for their lives. So, I, I, I said I'll be a bit fast. I'm talking about the five P's. The first one is to lead and that is to be a prince. Number two is to be a priest and a prophet. Who is a prophet? A prophet may be defined as a man regarded as an inspired teacher or proclaimer of the will of God. It's a father's responsibility to seek the will of God as a father. As a father, you must pray. You must seek God. As a, as a prophet, who is a prophet? I mean, so who is a, I, I defined a prophet first, sorry. A prophet is defined as a man regarded as an inspired teacher or proclaimer of God's will. A priest is defined as a man authorized to perform certain rites and administer certain sacraments. You are both to your family, a priest and a prophet. And you can only fulfill this role by being able to answer the big question. How many people know what the big question is? There's a big question on earth for everyone. Do you know what the question is? Why am I here? Rick Warren said, what on earth am I here for? The big question of the father they can only find the answer if they operate in the office of what? A priest and a prophet. You must seek God. And the Bible says, they that seek me, they will find me if they seek me with all their heart. You do not have a business leading your home if you have not sought the face of God to say, Lord, what are we here for? What are we supposed to be doing? What am I supposed to go do? Where am I supposed to go? What school are my children supposed to go to? What neighborhood are we supposed to leave? The life of these people is now in my hands. Help me. What am I supposed to do? You're a priest and you're a prophet. 
You must show your family that you revere God. They must see you in the morning. If you're lying on your face, you're kneeling down, or you're walking all over the place, just saying, God, I need you. I can't do it. I can't do it outside of you. They must see you. They must see you when you cry to God and say, Lord, help me. Your children must see you trying to figure life out because that's how they're going to figure it out too. And these children are smart. They will know. Don't let it be as if, oh, everything is figured out. If you're struggling with their school fees, tell them, um, we're just 75% your school fees. When you have family altar in the morning or in the evening, say we, want, we need to pray. We're trying to pursue, pursue a project and we're hoping that we'll get that deal. It's important. And let them know that God is your source. If you're not asking that question, why am I here? You will not be able to ask your children the same question. And you will not be able to help them figure that question. That is the number one question on earth. Fathers must be able to answer it. And they should be able to lead their children to answer it. Am I talking to someone? It is not less masculinity if you are confused about that question. It, is not, it doesn't make you inferior if you are not sure about the answer to that question. You know what it makes you? It makes you a real man. And the Bible says in multitude of counsel, there is safety. Hallelujah. Fathers as providers and protector. How do you do that? You do that by loving your wife, providing for your household. If your wife wishes to pursue other opportunities, you must love her and support her. You must be responsible to help her to be fulfilled in life. Because she has been put in your care. Providing is more than giving money. Providing an enabling environment. An atmosphere to thrive. Say for instance, your wife is a creative. Maybe she's a poem writer or an artist that needs to wake up at 4 a.m. to be able to, you know, connect with nature and be able to do things. You may be the alarm that will say, honey, it's four. That is providing the atmosphere that is required. It's a father's responsibility to ensure that children are not neglected. So sometimes your wife needs to, you know, do some career juggling. You have to work with her for the well-being of the children. Because bringing those children to this earth is an assignment that God gave you. It's part of why you are here. Do you understand? Those children are not just mishaps of ejaculation. Their deliberate orchestration of God. Planned. God is a God that shoots right on target. Do you know how many sperm cells swim to catch one egg? So when God has decided, we might be a more lowering light, he will set it up. That that day, something will happen. You will play that football and then it will hit the goal. And then that boy, that big-headed boy will come. Because there's an assignment. He said to Jeremiah, even before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. I saw named you a prophet to the nation. So it's not just a game of oh romance. It's more than that. You thought it was romance, you know. You were trying to scope your wife. You make my heart keep a beat every time I see you. Uh, 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 uh. That's what he thought you were doing. But God was saying, I'm setting him up now. I'm setting him up now. He's going to do it. He's going to move it. And then you went. And the woman said, okay, give it to me. And then you received it. And then the boy came. That boy, there's an assignment. You've got to ask God. Don't miss it. For everyone that is in your household, even your house elves, everyone that passes through your way, that is who you are as a father. You provide and you protect. One of your major responsibilities to your children 
is to love their mother and to walk towards our good. You're modeling serving before them. Because she's your, she's your cherished companion. She's your incubator. A lot of times men don't understand. When you love your wife, you're doing yourself a favor. Because everything you say, she will interpret. Whatever you give to her, she will multiply. So if I were you, I would just be nice to that woman. Because what you tell her, she would escalate. How many people have ever noticed? I don't know whether it happens to you. My husband knows. If he doesn't want anybody dead, he doesn't tell me that he offended him. Just come home and say, ah, babe, my clone Shelley, wait, ah, can you imagine this guy? He did this to me. That person is what? Dead. In fact, you know, it's so bad that if you tell me this person is not good and the person comes to our house the following day, I will show him that, excuse me, what are you doing here? <laughs> you are not wanted. <laughs> oh, they didn't tell you. Okay, I will tell you. Actually, right now, we are on our way out. <laughs> you have to go. Let it not be a mistake that, no, 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 I wasn't talking about Taiye, I was talking about Taiwo. Ah, I've already sent Taiwo out. Oh. <laughs> I don't know the difference. <laughs> Women are wired to sing the tunes of men. So when a man knows how to press the button, you get your wife to do whatever you want. Do you understand? Say, I'm the one, she's the one that has my mumu button. You got the mumu button, brother. You just need to know how to press it. And women are so easy to press, you know. But the women will kill me if I tell you all the secrets. Your wife will serve you. Because any local lady, I should tell them. Your wife will give you everything if only you let her think or know that she's your number one. Just tell her. Act it. You are number one. Do you understand? But you are number one. Above the children, you are number one. Above my career, karaoke, when you are there, you are number one. Football, ah, uh, ah, uh, football, football, kill you there. You are number one. No. As soon as she leaves, continue the football. But once she comes out, ah, number one. Ah. Once the woman feels that she's number one, she's ready. So I don't know what's wrong with men. That's the, that's the mumu button there. It takes a dying to self to be able to do that because the word tells you you are the macho but Jesus says if you're going to be the greatest you must be the servant of all just say I'm here to serve you babe tell me what you want that's how pastor steals all the meat in the house you say hey what's up yesterday he came and said mm -mm -mm, he's not working today you just come and the first thing you are testing who tastes a piece of meat, a piece of chicken, a piece of fish? Ah uh ah! -uh. Intestine. No, I said, stay. <laughs> I said, stay. Don't worry. By the time you have tasted, we will not have anything left. We just say, no, 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 no. And then you just show up five minutes to the end of. Say, let me do it. Let me do it. I say, ah uh ah, -uh, uncle. <laughs> we have been here for three hours. <laughs> And these five minutes last matters. You know, just jump in, take the apron and say, what are you doing here? I'm like, hmm. But funny enough, it works. It works. Say, babe, I don't like you sweating. I don't like you sweating. I've been sweating for three hours. Oh. But once you tickle the fancy of the woman, she melts. That's the way God made us. When we hear your voice from afar, we just melt like hot knife through butter. So a man needs to know how to sing the praise of his wife. You need to know how to make a hot Paulina Paulina. Kaka. You understand? You must know what you need to say to be able to make a... 
and she will just stop being macho with your wife just act vulnerable then you get the answer do you understand she will defend you women are ruthless she will protect you and if you make her feel that she's not number one she will fight you and if she fights you you will not survive it <laughs> men have father's responsibilities just like women have mother's responsibilities we are radically equal and radically different so don't compete with your wife but, but, but children require the attention of both so don't make your children choose between you and your spouse. It's not possible. A lot of women settle for their father, your useless father, irresponsible father, um, um, lazy father. But there is one noun. Come on. What is it? Father. The adjective is what is changing. The constant is what? The father. And in the beginning, God made them how? Male and female. So even if you're fighting with your husband, you better let him be a good father. Hello, somebody. At least let him be a good father. For the sake of those children. Because when a man and a woman, when they meet, what they can contribute to the life of the children is only 50-50. Even if you as a fantastic, phenomenal, exceptional, outstanding woman score 49 over 50, and you exclude the man, you are still a failure over that child. Am I talking to someone? The same thing for the man. You can't do it alone. So let's work together for the good of our children. When men have responsibility, what happens? They have it so that others may have privileges. God is making you a co-creator. When a man is responsible, being a responsible father deserves respect. When a man is responsible, he earns the respect of his household. When a man is irresponsible, he doesn't earn it. So men, they're not just going to respect you because you're a man. You need to be responsible. Somebody say responsible. A father's responsibility to protect is, is by far, for me, the most dramatic. Because statistics have shown that homes where fathers are present, the children, they are stronger. They do well in school. They have better marriages. Because the fathers are present. Or father figures. And homes where the fathers are escapee fathers, it affects the children adversely. The children whose fathers are in homes grow up more secure and safer. A father's active involvement in the children's life teaches confidence and security. So what am I saying? Prayerful fathers, they protect spiritually. Hardworking fathers, they protect financially. Healthy, strong fathers, they protect emotionally. Smart fathers, they master the act of violence. Men have a tendency to want to throw the fist. But when you master violence, you use it to your advantage. You use your instinct of machoism to protect your loved ones. I'll say that again. Prayerful fathers, protect spiritually hard-working fathers protect financially healthy strong fathers they protect emotionally smart fathers they master violence it's very very important as a man you must learn to master violence and know when to deploy you must know when to speak and when to refrain from speaking you must know when to fight and say no you can't go this far 
is very, very important. What if I say something to you this morning? That if men start fulfilling their responsibilities as fathers, the world's problem will be solved. What if I told you that? The reason we have area boys, the reason we have prostitutes, the reason we have vagabonds, the reason they are buying votes is because fathers have neglected their roles at home. If the government of the home is in order, the government of the nation would have little to do. Because you have taught your child not to steal. You have taught your child not to lie. You have lived it. You have modeled it. It would not go there and be sharing Ghana must go. Because we have not so learnt it. What is the core value of our home? Honesty. Integrity. You must be able to trace the, the source of your wealth. That's what you have lived. And that's what your son and your daughters have seen. So when they go out, but the fathers are out chasing money that is not lost. So the, the, the nation is in disarray. Am I speaking to the fathers? <coughs> so what would you say if I tell you this? That women, women stepped up when men stepped away. <laughs> but you know what? Women resent that position. The best of women will still want to be pampered. The best of women will still want the roses. Even when they are the ones making the money. Because that's the way God has wired a woman to be. To be waited on by her lover. If you want to know how to tantalize your wife today, go and read the book of Songs of Solomon. If you do not know, you have been such an issue for a long time. You don't know how to say good things, brother Tomide. Go and just sit down and construct a poem and say something, and then you bring out that capacity in your wife that is latent. Maybe next week I'll be talking to the women, but today is for men. There's a lot of fights going on and a lot of confusion in the world. And that's because men have left their roles. And they do not understand their God-given assignment. But today I'm calling us back. Even up to the point that we have motherhood ridiculed. When a woman... Is a homemaker and she's doing a good job of it. I remember when I went to sometimes I met this man that wrote uh, The Seven Mountains, John Enlo. I can't remember how many children they have. Hello. I met her sometimes in, um, about maybe seven, eight years ago in Atlanta. And she told me, I homeschool my children. John Enlow, the author of Seven Mountains. I read that book and I found myself in the U.S. And they said, the church is in Atlanta. I said, ah, I'm out back on them. You know, Nigeria, they carry last. I told my host, you know this area? He said, the area, I mean, it wasn't the Uber time, but fortunately it wasn't so far. I didn't want to go to the big churches. I wanted to go to the man who saw a vision and wrote about the seven mountains. So, on Saturday evening, so I told my host, please can we go there? And we went there. And as God will have it, their service was on Saturday evening. They don't have service on Sunday. So I, start, I, I was there, worship with them. I was shocked when I got to the church. So the drummer bah, 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 was beating the drum. Bah, bah. And when after the worship, I saw the drummer carry the microphone and he was preaching. I'm like, ah, ah. 
What kind of church is this? Oh, you know, our own church now, when Daddy Gio comes in, bah, then there will be three uh, supporting strikers. One will carry the Bible, one will almost carry the Agbada. So when he finished, and I said, okay, where is um, Pastor Johnny? They said, that's the one that just preached. I said, he was also the one beating the drum. I said, yes, because he's a drummer. Francis, I'm hoping one day you'll be the one preaching. <laughs> I was like, what? It was just like the time of Jesus that they needed to give a bribe to recognize him. All of them were brothers. So when he finished, I sat with him and his wife. I said, talk to me more, talk to me more. And then we were talking and all that. That's when he told me. She homeschooled the children because she felt that as a mother, she could do a better job with that than the teachers will do. Fathers should not make homemakers feel inferior to money-making machines. The most important thing is everyone should fulfill their purpose. I will be miserable as a homemaker. I'm not wired to do so. But that doesn't make me better than the person who's called. The mother of the Wesley brothers, she prayed her children all into ministry. She had that assignment and that call. It is the responsibility of a father to even know what is the capacity of your wife and support her to fulfill her dream, not your dream. When fathers are irresponsible, who benefits? Who benefits from chaos? When two people are fighting, when the world is confused, they say when two elephants are fighting, the grass suffers. You know who benefits? Our adversary. Satan, like a roaring lion. He brings all sorts of things into our midst. They say, oh, men and women are not equal. So we start fighting that. We are equal. God made us the same. In before God, there's no male nor female. There's no Greek or Jew. We'll be arguing that, arguing that, rather than pursue our assignment. And whilst we are doing that, the devil is praying over our children. He's stealing our loved ones. He's confusing them. He's selling them a phony. There's a natural order of things. We should know it and leave it out. Now, who suffers? I say, who benefits? The Satan. Who suffers? That's a good question. I say, who suffers when there's war? Who suffers when men neglect their responsibilities as fathers? Who suffers when men refuse to lead? Who suffers when fathers fail to consult and worship God and stop protecting and providing for their family? You know who suffer? Men suffer the least. The ones that suffer are our children and our wives. So women and children suffer the most. But this must stop. The next segment of my message today, I'm going to give you a model of a father. Say, really? Is there a model? Somehow. In Luke chapter 15, in Luke chapter 15, Jesus was given the parable of the of the lost coin. And I think this parable of the there's another lost, something that was lost in Luke 15. Then from verse 11, it told the parable of the lost son. Am I a perfect mother? No. I struggle too. But we can see, I, I was wondering, why would Jesus give that parable? It was Jesus that gave it. There must be a reason. And he was talking to Jews. He was talking to Pharisees and Sadducees. Teachers of the law. What was he saying? What was his intention? Luke chapter 15 from verse 11. One day Jesus told a story. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off to a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. 
you know the story, you call it the prodigal son, but they actually call it the parable of the lost son. Why would Jesus give that example, especially immediately after the lost treasure and the lost coin? That when you lose something, you will give everything up. You go and take a torchlight. You'll be searching for it under everywhere. And when you finally find it, you'll call people and say, come and rejoice with me, I found it. Because there's value on that thing. Immediately after that, he gave the parable of the lost son. And this was what he said. I'm going to use the acronym FATHER to explain what I think Jesus was trying to say. And to leave this as a memorabilia for the fathers to take home. Every time you remember father, you remember Luke chapter 15 from verse 11 to 32. And you remember the spelling of your call. Who are you called? Father. Forget about CEO. Forget about uh, chief executive. Forget about chairman. Forget about any of those titles. The title that God has given you is what? Father. And that's also the name that God himself is called. So it's very important to him. From Luke chapter 15, I found six things that we need to see as the model of a father and aspire to be like that for all men. Don't worry, women, we'll talk about yours next week. Number one, men are foundational. The model father prepares the bedrock that the children build on. How do I know that? Why? You know, the Jewish culture was such that when a man dies, he leaves inheritance for his children. The firstborn will get two portions, double portion. In this case, this man had two sons. That means he would have to divide his inheritance into three. The first son would have 66.6 percent and then the last one will have 33.3 percent now i'm not looking at the morality of the boy coming to ask for the thing before the father died for jesus to have used it as an example what he was saying is it is a man's responsibility to make sure your son does not start from his foot your son should start from your shoulder something must have you must have laid a foundation So stop running out of counter. Start asking yourself, what am I doing to give a platform for my children? They must be better than you. A lot of times, people that inherit a lot of wealth from their fathers, they are not able to give half what they inherit from their fathers to their own sons. That's a shame. In fact, people that don't inherit nothing, they do better. Because the struggle. You should. If you went to Feingbole Grammar School, you should send your children to Harvard. If you have a, a school start, you should make sure your children have a first degree. If you learn a skill or a trade, make sure your children learn a skill, a trade, and something. You are the foundation. They should build on what you have. It is the responsibility of the model father. The son could ask from the father because the father had something. A lot of times we want to quickly preach, oh, that um, you should give to your parents in old age. That parent, did he give it to you in, 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 your, in young age? Let's look at um, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14. Paul talking to the church in Corinthians. He said, now I'm ready to visit you the third time and I will not be a burden to you because what I want is not your possession but you. After all, children should not have to save up for their parents but parents for their children. I'll read it in the Amplified. He said, for children are not responsible to save up for their parents or parents for their children. Hey, fathers, you are not doing your children a favor by depriving yourself, denying yourself so that they can go to school, they can learn a trade, they can, you know, have some exposure. It is your responsibility. And when you do that, you prepare a safe future for yourself. Because when you are old, 
is what you have put in them that they will use for you. If you put nothing, there will be nothing to give you. Do you understand? So the first thing I want you to take home, the F in Father is what? Foundational. Prepare. I said the, the model father prepares the bedrock that the children build on. Because too much culture will make us worship our father even if they do nothing. I'm calling on fathers to be responsible and know that when you fail to do something, you are destroying the future of the children. Number two, model father, he allows. Somebody say allows. The model father has respect for individual autonomy. I mean, what would be your reaction? A lot of fathers have truncated the life of their children just because they wanted to study medicine and they scored 216 in jam. Jam did not jam them. So they ended up studying biochemistry, microbiology, pharmacy, all the other things apart from medicine. So they made up their mind. You, my first son, will be a doctor, second daughter, engineer, third one, lawyer, the fourth one can be anything. Have you gone to the high court or magistrate court? I like, I like magistrate court. If you see lawyers in magistrate court, you will not be praying that your children be lawyers. You will see their white shirts. They will be brown. And then they will be running. You know? Like, if you move near them, you will need a cologne for one week to remove the body odor. And that's because some fathers have made up their mind. You must be meds, a doctor, engineer, lawyer. A model father allows. One of the things you do is you start watching your children from young. Is this person an artist? Is he a painter? And you make up your mind that the highest place where painting is done, I will send you there. You're a singer? I'm sure if my father had tried, I would have been able to sing. Because the way this singing thing pains me. I want to sing. But my children said, Mommy, please don't sing outside. He said, because your voice is not sweet. And I'm like, why would God put a desire to sing inside me and a voice that is not sweet? Fathers, find out if your daughters want to sing. Take them to where? Singing school. A model father does what allows allows creativity, allows innovation, allows flexibility, gives room for mistakes. They won't always get it right. They won't. And when you allow it, God will provide for you. Am I talking to the fathers? It's a tough one. But that's what you're supposed to do. You're praying for them and you're saying, Lord, let your will be done. Let your will be done. I do not know, Lord. I do not know, Lord. I will not misdirect. I will not misguide this child. And God will know that you are holding his hands and he will help you. Because you are responsible. If model father is transcendent, what does it mean? It goes beyond the ordinary limit. It goes high. It goes low depending on circumstance. I mean, this father could have, he was rich, he could have set some some um, slaves and said, shadow that guy, shadow that guy. Just go anywhere. So by the time the guy gets to the pig's place and starts eating pig's food, the servant would just appear like an angel and push nice food. No, but he didn't do that. He goes above. He does not stand in the way of judgment. He recognizes the need for consequences because that is where training takes place so it's like a god you understand what i'm saying you know when you are going to steal god will allow you he would also make sure when the police comes that they catch you 
And when you are in prison, in Ikoi prison, it will be with you. Because it says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. <laughs> it's a good God. Somebody say, Amen. <laughs> That's a model father. You don't stop consequence. But you know what we do? I'm on for like We go to the police station and bail a truant. You let him stay there. That's what I know a father should do. Stay there. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, he will what? He will reap. When we do that to the first son, the second son will not steal. Hello, somebody. I'm wrapping up now. Where are we? H. A model father is helpful. He has a love that refuses to give up. He does not truncate injustice. He does not stand in the way of it. But he's helpful. I mean, I can picture the father hoping that someday something would happen. You know why? Let's look at um, verse 20 of Luke 15. It says, But while he was yet at a distance, his father saw him and had compassion on him. That means the father must have been looking out. Even though he never followed, he never told people to, to go and, you know, check him out. But he was praying and hopeful. He's a helpful man. He's a hopeful man. Fathers don't give up. Hey, fathers, don't give up on the destiny of your children. God has put in you what it takes to make them succeed. And I want to plead with you children that are fighting your fathers. If your fathers are able to pray for you, it would shorten even your toil. Don't let your fathers curse you. Let your fathers bless you. Because God himself is a father. And he has put a type of him on earth. That's why the Bible says you should honor your fathers and your mothers. He says it's the first commandment with a blessing. He has a love that refuses to give up. Don't give up. Don't give up on that child. Oh, your child is asthmatic. You're not sure. I've seen parents that pray for their children. And then one day, after like 13 years, they just saw that um, what's it called something from birth is genetical right congenital disease disappeared they've spent money 13 years then they said did you notice did you notice it's been one week it's been two it's been three and when you now have the cooperation of your spouse if two shall agree together concerning a thing there is nothing that you want over your children that you will not have it. But you must be helpful enough not to give up on them. Am I talking to the fathers? The model father, he exonerates. He is forgiving. Our father says, I forgive iniquity, I forgive transgressions, I reserve mercy for thousands. It's not punitive. He exonerates. The Bible says in verse 18, he runs from afar to embrace him. He runs to meet him. You know, um, in verse 18, the guy had planned what he was going to say. I will arise and go to my father and say to him, Father, I'm not worthy to be my, the, the, uh, the, thy son. Please, make me one of your children. He has rehearsed what he was going to say. But the father didn't even let him. You know, some of us say, I told you. Did I not tell you? Then you quote Exodus 20. He didn't say anything. He ran. Embraced. A model father does not just exonerate. He also does what? He restores. But the father said to his servant, Quick, bring the best robe. Put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. In the Hebrew tradition, the robe stands for honor. Ring stands for authority. So he gave him honor. He gave him authority. 
Then he said, put a shoe on his feet. Because in the Hebrew culture, slaves don't wear shoes. But sons wear shoes. He restored him. Then when the older brother came, I love that. I was upset. You know what he said to him? We, 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 we should look at how he was still able to manage the rivalry that could occur. Go to verse 32. He said, but we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours, he didn't say this son of mine. He said, this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Fathers must not encourage favoritism amongst their children. No matter what happens, let them know that they are called as brothers or sisters. The same way you are called as their father. This morning I want to pray for fathers. I want to pray first of all for anyone here listening to me or electronically who has been wounded by a father and you find it difficult to let go. Just as fathers, just as sons could be lost, fathers too could have made mistakes. If you're struggling here, you want us to pray with you because you have a challenge with your earthly father or a father figure, you can stand to your feet. We don't need to know what happened. We want to pray with you. Anybody? Because you need to release them to move on. The lost son will still have no inheritance. But he was still loved by the father. You can release that person who has hurt or offended you. Now we're going to pray for all men this morning. All men. All fathers. I just want you to bow your heads. And talk to God. What foundation are you laying do you allow your household to be all that God wants them to be? Are you living over and beyond? Are you helpful? Do you hold them in unforgiveness? Do you exonerate them? Do you restore them to their God-given position? Ask God to help you. He is your father. You cannot do outside of him. You cannot succeed without him. He is your father. He will help you. I want God to help you. I want God to support you. What do you want? What's your dream? Dream, dream big, dream big. There is enough resources in heaven. What do you want? Say, I want my family to fly first class to the moon. And I want to own the plane that will go there. Whatever. I don't know. Dream big. Dream wide. It's allowed. Don't limit God. I'm not saying daydreaming. When you're daydreaming, that means you're a risk to everybody. What do you need from God? Ask God. Ask God. Ask and it shall be given to you. We want to agree with you. We want to pray with you. And you will succeed. Name everything that you are responsible for. Prophesy over them. You are the Father. Speak. Speak. Today is your day. My Kalibo Sote Yamane. Honor is not the pieces of meat that we give you. In fact, when you get to some egg, they will tell you to cut it. So let's get the real honor. Let's get the real honor. When you discharge your responsibilities, your household will respond by respecting you and by honoring you. What do you need to get there? What are you struggling with that you're not able to? Pray today. The whole church is praying with you. I can hear the men pray. I can hear their women supporting them. Maika soto paia shada yamane. Malika laba sonto yelamane. Maleka soko pali masone. Neka yila bo sonte yalaba sone. Neka yala masone yalaba kuri yamasane. Malebara kosone. Eka yala ho soko payamane. Malika sone. Women pray for your husbands. Pray for your brothers. Pray for them to succeed. Pray that God would appear to them. Pray that God will reveal himself to them. Pray that God will answer their prayers. 
that their heart desires will be granted and their expectations will not be cut short. Pray. Release the blessing of God upon them.